welcome back to my channel. In today's video, it is going to be all about winter plant care. Now, I live in New Zealand, we are in the southern hemisphere and we are coming into winter. So I thought now would be the perfect time to do an updated video of winter house plant care. So your winter plant care routine should actually change a bit from your summer summer plant care routine because obviously in summer there is a, a lot more daylight hours, your plants are vigorously growing and in winter time there are less daylight hours, the sun sits lower in the sky, the temperatures are colder and your plants growth slows down. So there are a few things that you should be tweaking here and there in the colder months with your plants. So let's get into the video. So the first thing I want to talk about is lighting because that is probably the most important one. Now I am in what I like to call my plant room but it's really just a nook in my house that is technically supposed to be the dining room but it has the biggest window and the best light for all my plants so I like to keep them in this space and as you can see behind me here I do have a grow light that is because I have a lot of plants over here that don't really receive any natural light because this window here actually backs into the carport which is covered by a roof which is why it's got that sort of greeny bluey tinge because it's the color of the plastic on the roof. Really the only light source that my plants have is this big window here and the grow light back there. I do have like a normal ceiling light in the middle but that really doesn't offer any light whatsoever. Because these plants back here receive no direct light, this grow light is on all year round whether it's summer or winter but grow lights are a great way of giving your plants some extra light especially in the winter months when the light hours are shorter and you might not necessarily receive as much light into your home. Usually because the sun is lower in the sky in winter, it means that the sun is less harsh on your plants. So if they're adapted to it, they can actually tolerate some direct sun. So my big variegated monstera here, so this big beauty here, now she actually gets full sun, well not full sun, probably the bottom half of the plant gets direct sun in winter and I've actually grown this plant from a single leaf cutting so it's adapted to my home conditions and it's adapted to the light conditions so it is used to receiving some full sun in winter so therefore it can tolerate it. But that is one thing to note, so the direction of the sun does change so your plants in summer that might not get any direct sun may get some direct sun in winter so you just need to monitor how the light changes over the seasons and how much it comes into your home. It's pretty overcast today but the sun has come out between the clouds and you can sort of see it is still really early in the morning so it's only 10 o'clock um, but this is how far the sun comes in in the morning and then sort of by midday towards the afternoon it's sort of in about here so yeah you can see that these plants here are already starting to get a little bit of direct sun but they don't mind because it is winter. So yeah you just really need to monitor the light levels in your home and if need be I highly recommend investing in some grow lights. They're amazing. The ones that I have and the ones that I sell on my website are LED grow lights so they use minimal power and they em emit minimal heat so they're ideal to have on sort of all day every day and I do have grow lights also in my shop grow tent but that is because it obviously it's in a closed tent and it doesn't get any natural light whatsoever but yeah grow lights are amazing to supplement light in winter time when the light levels are lower and the daylight hours are shorter. Okay I've just turned my grow light off for this portion of the video so I can film here without it being really bright behind me but the next topic I want to talk about is watering so a lot of people run into issues in winter with watering their plants because plants growth slows down in winter it means that they use or uptake less water therefore you need to water your plants less but this also depends what sort of substrate you have your plants in as well. So if you have it in a really dense soil mix that retains a lot of moisture 
that the period in between waterings will be a lot longer than if you had a really chunky, light, well-draining soil that dries out a lot quicker. You may still be watering a bit more frequently, so you really need to adapt your watering habits to what, sign, what kind of substrate you have your plants in. So pretty much all of my plants are planted in my chunky Hoya and Aroid mix. So it does dry out a lot quicker than like a standard potting mix because it's really airy and well draining. Now the most common cause for root rot is soil that holds on to moisture for too long. So basically when the soil is dry there is lots of tiny little air pockets in the soil because your plant's roots do need oxygen. So in a well-draining, airy mix, there is a lot of air pockets in that mix so the roots can get oxygen. When you water the soil, it fills in all those air pockets and it really minimizes the oxygen in the soil. Therefore, if your soil stays wet for too long, it's essentially suffocating the plant's roots and that is when they tend to rot. So you really need to monitor your watering levels in winter. And a great way to do this is using clear pots. Now I'll show you an example. So I'll use my Philodendron subhistatum as a example. So this guy really does need a repot. As you can see his roots are coming out the bottom. Clear pots are a fantastic way of monitoring the soil moisture levels in your plants, especially over the winter time. The moisture level in this pot is actually quite dry, so I could actually water this plant, but if you look at it, it is, all the leaves and all the petioles are facing upwards, none of it's drooping, they're all firm and juicy, which means for now, it has enough moisture in it and it doesn't actually need to be watered. This is kind of turning into a bit of a how to water video, but you can also tell if your plant needs water just by feeling it. So this feels quite heavy, you know that there's moisture in it, so it doesn't quite need to be watered yet. Whereas if the pot, like that pot that I had my subhistatum in, when I picked that up, it is super light, you can tell there's no moisture left in it. So that is a really good indication as well to know when to water your plants, is just pick them up, feel them, feel the weight of them when you have watered them and feel the weight of them once they have dried out and then you that will be a good indication as well to help you know when to water your plants. So to stay on the topic of watering, you also still need to feed your plants during winter. I know a lot of there is a lot of information out there that people say don't feed your plants in winter because they stop growing. That is not true. Plants still keep growing even in winter time. Even if you can't notice any foliage growth, a lot of plants actually put the energy into growing their root system during winter and during the colder months. So therefore, they still need nutrients to grow. Obviously, they don't need as much nutrients to grow as they do in the summertime. So I like to really dilute my fertilizer, but I still do feed all through the winter. And this also helps avoid any nutrient deficiencies come spring and summer when the plants boost into growth. Their soil and their substrate has had constant nutrients available to them. Therefore, they won't be getting nutrient deficient in any nutrients that they need to grow. I like to use the growth technology range, either the complete focus or the foliage focus, just depending which one I have on hand. These are amazing because they are a complete fertilizer, so they have every nutrient your plants need, including calcium. And also Root Zone, this is a new one. This is a root biostimulant that you can use and mix together with the fertilizer. And this is a specific one for real robust root growth. And it sort of fills in the gaps that the fertilizers alone can't supply to the roots. So yeah, I've been using these two in conjunction with each other especially since I've got this in. This is a fairly new product, so I can't really comment on the results of it so far, but I've been using the Growth Technology Fertilizers for a very long time, and they are fantastic. So yeah, highly recommend feeding your plants during winter at just a diluted rate, and you can even do it every second watering. I like to do it every watering, but again, I use a really diluted ratio, just so they get a little bit of a boost each time I water. Another thing to note in winter time is keep your plants away from any cold drafts coming through windows or any heating units, whether that be a heat pump, 
a fireplace, a heater, just make sure you keep your plant well away from any sudden change in temperatures like windowsills and like heat pumps. So our heat pump is in the middle of the room, so I have no plants near it. You want to keep plants at least a meter and a half to two meters away from any heating or cooling device. Just be aware that plants near windows or near heaters the sudden change in temperature they're not going to like it so if you do notice some yellowing leaves on plants that are near these things just keep that in mind you might want to move them away so another thing to note is a lot of people say do not repot your plants in winter and while that is kind of technically right it doesn't mean that you can't repot plants in winter it is just probably not the best practice to and that is because when you repot your plants depending whether you like really loosen up the soil or really disturb the root system that can be a really big shock to plants and when the weather is cold it takes them a lot longer to recover so what i like to do if i have to repot in winter time is you literally just take your plant out don't disturb the root ball put it in the next size pot and then just fill in the soil around it and before you repot it give it a good water a few days before and then allow the plant to absorb some of that moisture before you repot it and then when you repot it i wouldn't water it for another week say let the plant use up all the any moisture that's left in the pot from when you watered it and then you can give it a good water once the soil has really dried out another repotting tip i can give you in the winter time is if you really don't want to repot a plant what you can do is you can give it a good liquid feed if it needs it and then you can top the top of the soil off with fresh potting mix and if you have available to you some worm castings and this will as you water the plant this will slowly trickle down through the old potting mix and help revitalize that older soil and add some much needed nutrients back into it and that will get you another few months until springtime until you can repot the plant so that is actually what i did with my aloe vera plant if you follow me on instagram you would have seen the reel that i made sharing this tip so this is it here it was looking so sad the leaves were really droopy but these have all plumped up nicely and yeah it's just looking really good now so i'm happy with that so this will last in this pot again until the spring and summer time when i can repot it when the temperature is a lot warmer okay and the last plant care tip i want to talk about is cleaning your plants leaves if you're a plant person you should definitely know by now that plants create all the energy through photosynthesis which means they absorb light through the leaves and then they convert that light into energy which helps the plant grow so if your plants have dirty leaves the dust and the dirt is blocking the sunlight from actually penetrating through the leaves it can really hinder it hinder your plants growth and it's especially important in winter time when as i said before the daylight hours are shorter and the light levels are less now i highly recommend a really good quality plant cleaning oil I use the Plant Buds Leaf Shine and Protect which is a all natural neem based spraying oil. You want to get a really good quality cleaning oil because you don't want the oil to clog the plant's pores. This is why I really like this one, it's quite a light cleaner um, and it gives the leaves a nice polish. So yeah, find yourself a good quality one. I highly recommend the Plant Buds but there is also, if you're in New Zealand or Australia, there is the Plant Runner which is very similar also heard good reviews about that so yeah you basically just want to spray your leaves down wipe them with a lint free cloth so you can use either paper towels or a microfiber cloth and yeah that just really helps your plants absorb as much sunlight as possible and it also makes them look really nice as well I will go and get a paper towel and I will get, show you an example of a nice clean leaf so I will use this leaf as an example. So I've got my paper towel here. And now it is going to be able to absorb any light that comes in the window. I highly recommend giving your plants a really good wipe down especially in winter time and especially for plants that have big glossy green leaves because this is basically 
their solar panel. <laughs> Actually, I've got one more thing. So I almost forgot to talk about it because I don't use them, but a lot of people use heat mats in winter. Now, personally, I find you don't really need a heat mat unless you're planning on doing a lot of propagating in winter. But in terms of having heat mats for your plants, it really isn't necessary. So if you're growing plants in your home, they're established plants, they're already usually pretty hardy. And unless you're in like the bottom of the South Island when it get, where it gets minus temperatures and super freezing, then you may need to use heat mats for your more... Uh, temperature sensitive plants but each to their own if you want to use heat mats in winter time for your plants by all means go ahead it is definitely not going to hinder them if you don't use heat mats on established plants it can help them grow a bit more hardier and in terms of overall plant care that's kind of what you want you want really hardy plants so for all the house plants that I grow for my shop none of them are on heat mats I like to grow plants really hardy even if they grow in the greenhouse, they do get temperatures down to 2 degrees, 2 or 3 degrees. And I have no heating in my greenhouse because I like to grow hardy plants. So when they come into your home, they're going to be able to tolerate a wider range of temperature. Anyway guys, I think that is it for this winter plant care video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you found some of this information useful. And let me know if I missed anything in the comment box below. And also leave your number one houseplant care tip in the comment box below so others can read it and be inspired. And don't forget to like this video if you did find anything useful. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on all the planty content that I create for you. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye! <sighs> Give it a few... Oh, I'm out of breath. Oh, I can't speak. There. Get my washing out of the way.